Awesome, cool. All right, so today we're going to extend PowerPage using Power Automate, which is pretty exciting. A uh, little bit about myself first. I'm an independent Power Platform specialist, Microsoft MVP. I did time at Microsoft. I escaped, um, and uh, so as as I as people do, I'm also a certified trainer. I am a competitive power lifter. I unfortunately earlier this week I re-injured my shoulder, so I'm actually going to be taking a bit of time off rehabbing that. Uh, that's why this arm is not going up very much today. Um, the other thing I want to shout out is I do a podcast uh, about Power Platform stuff every two weeks where we cover all the news and updates. I do that with my very good friend, Ulrika Ackerbeck out of Norway. And also I'm an event organizer for the Canadian Power Platform Summit. So I get myself into a ton of trouble, uh, a lot. Anyways, um, you can reach me on uh, .card slash readyxrm. That's where all the links are. But you're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Power Automate and Power Pages. So what I want to kind of talk about, why do you care? Why do you want to use Power Automate and Power Pages? What are some of the use cases? And we'll talk about a use case. I'll show you one. Uh, it's a little bit fun. And we're going to build that actual Power Pages Automate flow and integrate that and talk about building a web page to get the input and then get the results. I will talk very little bit about licensing, just some nuances there that we should all be aware of. All right, diving into a little bit further. Why, why would we use Power Automate in Power Pages? Um, so first off, out of the box, Power Pages cannot use Power Platform connectors. So of course we have, what, over a thousand connectors or something like that now, something crazy. And of course, new ones being added every day, but we can't use those natively in Power Pages. So all of these connectors that we, we know and love, we need a way to get to them. So we can get to them using Power Automate. Now, for those of you who are Power Pages developers or beginning to dip into that, you've probably heard of this thing called the Web API. And believe me, the Web API is probably one of my favorite features of uh, Power Pages, but we're limited. We're limited to uh, create, read, update, delete, and associate. And we can't call custom actions, or I just relearned the other day, we can't do batch operations as well. So uh, we have some limitations there. Now, yes, we can trigger flows from Dataverse. Of course, we can update things from our Power Pages into our Dataverse. However, those flows are asynchronous. Here's something that a lot of people don't really realize. Power Automate flows triggered from Power Pages are synchronous, meaning they have to run to completion, which is very beneficial. Um, and they also run very fast. And I've been finding using, having the ability to use uh, Power Automate flows kind of greatly reduces development time, although we still need to do some development activities for this. So moving along. Um, so here are some use cases for using Power Automate Power Pages. Obviously, to call external services, again, to tap into those thousands of connectors. Uh, the sample that you see on Microsoft Docs is doing the weather, but also if you want to do a currency conversion, a real time, and yes, the Canadian dollar is uh, beginning to tank. So if you're getting paid in other currencies, like I do sometimes, it's kind of beneficial um, to see that on a daily basis. But maybe you want to do something else. You want to calculate shipping costs. You want to do some tax calculations. Uh, those types of things we can call those external services for. Then we can also do things like trigger database actions or trigger some of those data first custom actions. Or if we also, some another use case is doing large database updates. We can take a JSON file, dump it into Power Automate and do some bigger updates as opposed to kind of processing through the web API. So these are just some ideas and I'm sure there's a whole whack more things we can do with this, um, but I just wanted to kind of give you a bit of a taste. All right, so some things to consider as we're using Power Automate within Power Pages. Basically, we have to use the Power Pages trigger and response when we're setting up our flow, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, we need to call the calling the ability to call the Power Pages action. We need to actually do add some code. This is not a no code, low code thing. This is something we do actually have to add a little bit of code, but I will show you, and there is uh, some samples. Uh, there is a sample on Learn, and as well as I have my own GitHub, where I'll have the example I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, the other thing is, and this this sort of gets, and I don't want to get into this whole licensing thing, but you will need licensing for Power Automate and those premium connectors. There is the licensing within Power Pages does not include this. 
And then, of course, you also need to consider security and access, user access to run the flow. So that just makes good common sense. All right. So let's uh, move into a demo. Who wants to see a demo as opposed to PowerPoint? Probably everybody, I'm guessing. Woo! Woohoo. Oh, I heard a woo. I love it. Cool. All right. Whoops. I'm just going to move Teams over here. All right. So let's get out of PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about licensing. No one does. And first off, I'm going to go into my PowerPages Design Studio. And again, I've already provisioned a Power Pages site, um, which is pretty straightforward. Um, I've already set this up. And what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new flow. I'm going to go into Setup. And I'm going to go into my Cloud Flows here. You'll see that in the Setup Workspace. Power Pages has a series of workspaces. We're going to go into Cloud Flows. And I've created a flow here. Uh, it's called Chuck Norris Fact. We'll get into that in a little bit. Now, if I wanted to, I could add an existing flow or I could create a brand new flow. So if I go in and create a brand new flow here, it's going to create it within the context of our Power Pages Design Studio. It is going to use the older U interface. Um, but here, I, what I would search for is the Power Pages trigger. And we see that here we have that Power Pages trigger. And when Power Pages calls a flow, so that's what I would start with. I would begin to add things like an input. So these are fact things that we can add to the flow. And then I would do my next step. Now for this one, this is a highly mission critical business application, but it is the Chuck Norris API. Um, I don't know if anybody's used this. This of course was created by our good friend, Daniel Lakovitz. Uh, he, he didn't create the, the Chuck Norris IO, but he created the connector for it. So we have this connector here so we can get a random Chuck Norris fact or we can search for particular facts here. I'm just going to choose a random one. And then once we actually, we can choose the category here. There's a series of categories uh, that we could pass along. And then of course, once we have that highly important information, we can send that back. So we would just go within Power Pages again and we would return that value back to Power Pages. So this is a super simple flow, but of course, you could build much more complex ones, but the, the key is you, you'd use that Power Pages trigger and you would return those values and you would do all your magic in between here, uh, in between. Now, I've created another one earlier, so we have all this set up already. And what it's going to come up with when we add that flow to our site is this URL. So we're going to need this API URL. I can copy this here. The other thing we need to do is, I'm just gonna quickly edit this. We also need to make sure what web roles. So again, I'm not gonna go deep into Power Pages security, just keeping an eye on time, but basically uh, we want to be able to add security roles here that only certain people are allowed to run or access this flow. So now that we got the Power Automate side set up, let's actually go back into Power Pages and configure there. And like I said, if I go into the um, design studio here, of course, anybody who's used Power Pages knows we can uh, use Copilot, can help us out, or we can go in and build our own stuff. We can go and add things like, um, uh, if I just go in here into a particular section, I'm just going to add a section here. I can add different column sections, different spacers. And then once I'm in here, we have text, button, image, video, card, gallery, forms, a whole bunch of different things. But if you're miss notice here in the data, we don't have a power automate thing. There's nothing here to select. So we're going to have to go in and use code for that. That's okay, no problem. I'm gonna go into this page I created earlier called Chuck Norris Facts. Now, I'm not a designer. I am at best a citizen designer. So that's why this looks a little bit ugly, but we're really, uh, really not here for the design aesthetics, but more the functionality. So basically what I have here is I want to be able to select that category and get that fact. Now I had to design this using actually to go in the code. Uh, if you're new to Power Pages, it's actually very developer friendly. I can click on this edit code here, and this is going to take me directly into Visual Studio code for the web, which is super cool because that way, if I wanted to, I could still load Visual Studio code for the desktop and, and utilize this. But directly from Power Pages, I could do go into the web version, which is really, I think it's one of my favorite features uh, as well, as well uh, Jim. Um, it's, uh, 
So I have my code here. I have, like I said, some of my design stuff. Yes, I, I'm embedding CSS. I know that's not the right way to do it. I know I'm going to hear some flax some from my designer friends. But uh, anyways, here's the code itself. I've added a div class. I've added a HTML drop down here with all of those categories. Um, again, this is where Copilot and ChatGPT can really help you kind of format this. Yes, there is Copilot for developers within Power Pages as well. Um, I've tried to generate this code with it. It's a little clunky at this point, but of course, as we all know, Copilot just keeps getting better every day. So maybe we can revisit that at some point. Um, I have a button here, uh, basically submitting that. So basically I'm collecting that category and then basically we're going to send that to the flow. And remember earlier, I copied that, uh, that flow link here. So I'm going to paste that URL in here and it's going to package this up, uh, that information I'm passing. So here's that category uh, that I would choose. It would send this off to the flow. And then basically I'm gonna wait for this. It's gonna use an Ajax safe post. I'm gonna wait for it. And then when it comes back with the result, I'm gonna take that fact and I'm gonna dump that back into my website. So this is all pretty much, um, pretty much just regular uh, kind of API code using JavaScript. Um, again, like I said, Power Pages is very developer friendly in this aspect. So once I've got that code written and all set up, and I've only embedded it this time just in a web page, but I'm a big fan of doing these things in web templates, but that's a conversation for another day. And we want to actually see the end result here. So I'm going to go back into my uh, page here. Um, whoops, I'll just close that. And here I've, I've launched my, well, actually I can go here. Uh, I got, sorry, I have teams that's hogging my screen. There we go. I basically, once I've done edited my code, I would sync it back here. Didn't make any changes. So now let's just hit the preview. Preview is important because preview will clear the cache. So if you make changes in your design studio or make changes in Visual Studio Code, we want to make sure you're getting the latest. So if you hit that preview, that's going to make sure the site is there so i'm on my page remember i had to sign in i had to make sure it's authenticated user so i've already done this i'm going to choose a category let's choose uh let's choose movie for now i'm going to get my chuck norris fact and basically it's calling that flow and it's basically giving me teenage mutant ninja turtles is based on a true story chuck norris once swallowed a turtle whole and when he crapped it out the turtle was six feet tall and he learned karate um, so some of these things are a little question, a uh, little maybe not suitable for work. Uh, that's why I'm not choosing explicit. Maybe I can pick another one, hit uh, music, get another Chuck Norris fact. But basically, you can see the idea here. It's very fast. Who let the dogs out? Chuck Norris let the dogs out, of course. And then Roundhouse kicked them all through at Oldsmobile. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you, uh, David. I love David at his stream deck. It's a powerful combination. So. Um, I just uh, basically, hopefully you get the, the gist here of using Power Automate within Power Pages. So this to me opens up a whole realm of new possibilities uh, using Power Pages and Power Automate. And hopefully as you work on your Power Pages projects, this can actually get you through some roadblocks and some humps. So thank you everybody for participating today.